Howdy. This video is on acid-base indicators. Acid-base indicators are used in acid-base titrations to determine the equivalence point. And so you should be able to do after watching this video is determine the best indicator for a titration, be able to describe how indicators are composed of weak acid and conjugate base. And because they are composed of weak acid and conjugate base with, that are different colors, you can actually use a henderson ossebach equation to better understand acid-base indicators. And so titrations are used to determine the concentration of an analyte. Basically, you add a titrant with a very known concentration until you completely react with the analyte. You determine how much titrant you added. From that, you get the moles of the titrant, and moles of the titrant should equal the moles of the analyte if you add a one-to-one -one stoichiometry ratio for the reaction. Now, for acid-base indicators, two ways of actually determining when you've reached the equivalence point. You can either use the pH meter or you can use an acid-base indicator. Now, the equivalence point actually, the pH of the equivalence point is going to depend on the type of titration that you're actually doing. And so if you're titrating a strong base using a strong acid, the pH of the equivalence point should be 7. But if you're titrating a weak base with a strong acid, then the pH at the equivalence point is going to be less than 7. And if you're titrating a weak acid using a strong base, then the pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. And so the equivalence point is going to change depending on what type of titration that you're going to use. And so you might have to use a different type of acid base indicator. So for instance, if you're doing titration of strong acid, strong base, say HCl and sodium hydroxide, now at the equivalence point, you've added enough of the titrant to completely react with the analyte. Now for titrations, the Ekman constant for the reaction has to be very, very large. You want to be able to consider that they go to completion. And so at the equivalence point, you've added enough titrant to completely react with the analyte, and so you're basically left with just products. And so in this case, you'd be left with sodium chloride and water, which should have a pH as seven. And so titration is strong acid, strong base. Equivalence point should be seven. Now, if we look at a, a few different indicators, you know, phenolphthalein, litmus, and methyl orange, you want the indicator to change color as close to equivalence point as possible. And so in this case, the litmus actually changes color closer to the equivalence point than the phenolphthalein or the methyl orange. And so litmus may be the best case, um, best choice for indicator in this titration. Now, if we look at the titration of a strong acid, a weak base using a strong acid, say HCl and ammonia, again, Ekman constant is very huge. And so at the equivalence point, you've added enough titrant to completely react with the analyte. You can consider the reaction goes to completion. So you're left with the chloride ion and the ammonium ion. Now, the ammonium ion is the conjugate acid of weak base, and so it's going to be slightly acidic. And so if we look at the graph, S corresponds to the equivalence point. And so notice that S is actually lower than 7. And so at the equivalence point for this titration, the pH is going to be acidic. And so the equivalence point occurs in a different place, so we have to use a different uh, acid base indicator. And so methyl orange actually changes color fairly close to the equivalence point. And so methyl orange would be a good indicator to use for this titration. Now, finally, here we have the titration of weak acid using a strong base, say HF, being titrated using sodium hydroxide. And so again, Ekman cost is huge. And so at the equivalence point, you have mostly the products, which would include F- and sodium ions. Sodium ions are neutral. F- is the conjugate base of weak acid, and so that's going to be basic. Now, we look at the equivalence point, we see that the equivalence point is greater than 7. And actually, the phenolphthalein changes color in this region. So phenolphthalein would be a good choice of an indicator for that type titration. Phenolphthalein is a fairly common indicator. Um, you can see the picture on the left. And so at pH of 7, phenolphthalein is clear. And then at pH of 12, phenolphthalein is that pink color. Now, phenolphthalein, we say indicators are weak acid conjugate base um, of different colors. And so when you change the pH, you actually change from which form is dominant. And so at low pHs, pH is lower than the pKa for the indicator, you're going to have mostly the acid form of the indicator. And then as you raise the pH of the solution, that's going to um, go into the base form of the indicator. And then close to the pKa, when the pH is close to the pKa of the indicator, you're going to have a mixture of the acid form and of the base form of the indicator. And so for phenolphthalein, on the left is actually the acid form, it's colorless. And on the right is the base form. And again, if you have a high pH solution, you're going to have mostly the base form. It's going to be pink. If you have a low pH solution, you're going to have mostly the acid form. And so that's going to be clear. You can actually use um, the Shotley's principle. Think about this. 
And so you, you have your weak acid going to hydronon plus the conjugate base. The weak acid's colorless, conjugate base is pink. Now you can imagine that if we add hydrogen ion, we're gonna drive this reaction to the left and we'll go from pink to being colorless. Likewise, we can look at this reaction on the bottom. And so if you add hydroxide, then you're actually gonna drive this reaction to the right and you go from being colorless to being pink. Now the indicator, you only had a couple drops when you're doing titration, so the indicator doesn't really affect the pH, but the pH affects which form of indicator is present. And so if the pH of the solution is lower than the pKa of the indicator, you're going to have mostly the acid form of the indicator and not much base form. If the pH is much, much greater than the pKa, you have mostly the base form and very little acid form. If the pH equals the pKa of the indicator, then the concentrations of the acid form and the base form should be the same according to the henderson hasselbalch equation. And of course, correspondingly, pH is less than pKa. If you're looking at phenolphthalein, the solution should be colorless. If the pH is greater than the pKa, then the solution should be dark pink. And if the pH equals pKa, then it should be um, a light pink. But again, indicator is only present in the solution at a couple drops, so the indicator does not affect the pH of the solution, but the pH of the solution does affect what form of the indicator is present. And again, because indicators are composed of weak acid conjugate base, you can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. And again, remember that when the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid, when that fraction is equal to one, log of one is zero, and that gives you the pH equals the pKa. A couple other indicators would be bromothalma blue with a pKa of 3.9, methyl red with a pKa of 5. You can look at a longer list of indicators. Again, they're all composed of weak acid conjugate base with different colors. Um, they change color at a wide range of pHs depending on what kind of titration that you're doing. And again, which form of the indicator is present depends on the pH of solution and the re relationship between the pH of the solution and the pKa of the indicator. Bromothymol blue indicator is yellow in acidic solution and dark purple in basic solution. This color change is reversible with a change in pH. And so it is reversible. You can go back and forth between the two different forms of the indicator just by changing the pH back and forth. And so again, here's a list. Um, a lot of different indicators, all weak acids, conjugate bases. And so indicators are composed of weak acid conjugate base that have different colors. Because the indicators are composed of weak acid conjugate base, the henderson hasselbalch equation can be used better to understand them. And again, for the henderson hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus log base over the acid. Remember, the concentration of the base of the concentration of the acid, those are the initial concentrations. Um, when the pH of the solution equals the pKa of the indicator, then the concentrations of the weak acid, the conjugate base forms of the indicator should be the same. I hope this helps.